Welcome back to Great Day Washington. It's Medical Monday. That's right. And arthritis and rheumatism associates, they've been dedicated to diagnosing and treating people with joint, muscle, and tendon issues for more than 30 years. And here to tell us about psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis is Dr. Evan Siegel. Welcome to Great Day. Thank you, Andy. Well, let's get started by kind of understanding the connection between psoriasis and psoriatic. Tell me about that. All right, well, let's start with psoriasis. So psoriasis is a very common inflammatory autoimmune skin condition that affects as much as two to 3% of the population, a lot of people. About, and that can be a, both an uncomfortable and an unsightly condition, but about 30% of those people, one in three, will develop psoriatic arthritis, a painful form of arthritis that can cause inflammation of the joints. Generally occurs about nine to 10 years after the onset of psoriasis, so many of these people are already seeing other types of doctors, particularly their dermatologist, but as much as 40 or 50% of those people can end up having disability if they don't get treated on time. Mm -hmm. uh, I put up a picture, I think, uh, uh, that we just saw of a patient with psoriatic arthritis hands, uh, and you can see how disabled those are. That person uh, was a dentist, so you can imagine how difficult mm -hmm. it would be to continue with their career uh, with those types of arthritic changes. But we can prevent that these days by early treatment. And as a rheumatologist, what do you look for to help diagnose this disease? Well, psoriatic arthritis affects a number of different areas. There's no specific blood test for it, so it's called a clinical diagnosis. So we look for six different areas of involvement. That's the skin, like we were talking about, and the nails, which can be badly involved with psoriasis. And then arthritis, which is usually a very asymmetric type of arthritis, which differentiates it from rheumatoid arthritis, which is usually very symmetric. And then we look for tendinitis, uh, because that's very common in psoriatic arthritis, things like tennis elbow, Achilles tendinitis, plantar fasciitis. Um, often people will develop something called dactylitis, swelling of an entire digit that looks like a sausage, very painful. Mm, oh and they can develop inflammatory back pain, which means mm. back pain that's worse with rest and better with activity, unlike usual back pain, which gets worse when you're active uh, with it. Um, so uh, we look for all of those different signs and symptoms, and then we try to make the diagnosis. And if we can make that diagnosis, then we can determine the appropriate treatment. Now, thinking back to that dentist and people who work with their hands, I mean, this affects a person's, not only their emotions and their life, but their livelihood. So what type of treatments are available? Oh, uh, well, you know, I, I often say to people that if there was ever a time to be treated for psoriatic arthritis now is the time there has been a revolution in treatments that are available. So we always start with basic things like uh, lifestyle changes, stop smoking, lose weight. We found that those things specifically help. But then we decide how severe their disease is. And uh, we try to tailor the treatment to the severity of the disease. So we might start with things like non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. That's things like ibuprofen and Aleve, but usually more prescription forms of those. Then we go to something called disease modifying agents, which are things like methotrexate, used initially for other things, but over the last 30 years, effective for both the skin and the joints. And then we often move on, uh, based on the manifestations, to medications called biological biologic therapies. And that's what's come out over the last two decades now. Uh, these therapies intervene with a specific part of the immune system, slow down the inflammation and the pain, but also stop the progression of the disease. We've been able to show that. So early treatment with those types of medications can really be effective in slowing down those types of disabilities that we saw there. And an individual's physician can send them to Arise uh, Infusion Therapy Services, correct? And if so, how does that work? Right, so uh, Arise Infusion Therapy Services is a group of uh, five different infusion centers. Mm -hmm. So. Many Many of these medicines, these biologics we were talking about, are given either by intravenous infusion or by subcutaneous injection, either at home or in a place like Arise. Uh, Arise is staffed by uh, 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 registered nurses that are very familiar with these types of disease processes, these immune disease processes. They're, uh, they're caring and they're understanding, and it's a setting uh, that is sometimes much better than going to a hospital uh, in those situations. Absolutely. 
absolutely. People yeah. are so nervous. And what really mm -hmm. excited me is when you said you can stop the progression. That is so exciting as someone who has family members with arthritis and so maybe even psoriatic arthritis. I'm going to call my aunt, but I want to tell you which number to call to schedule an appointment with arthritis and rheumatism associates. Just go to www dot washington arthritis dot com slash w u s a nine or you can just call two four zero five one four fifty six twenty now to speak to a coordinator at arise infusion therapy services call two four zero five one four five zero zero one or go to arise infusion dot com slash w u s a nine doctor thank you so much for the good information oh, my pleasure thank you for having me thank you doctor we'll be right back coming up the great american total